What is up, down and sideways, you absolutely stunning individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Today, uh, we were blessed by KT Rolster dropping a little, not a, a see you later ceremony for Deft. Them saying this is a comma in his career, not a period. He's going to be stepping away during military service. Uh, coming back afterwards, question mark, hopefully, but it's the perfect opportunity either way for us to look at at his career and do a little comparison I've been meaning to do for a long time in terms of grand scale of Def's career. I think there's only one player in the AD carry role that you could compare and say who is better, who's had the better career, and Mark, that man is Ruler. It has to be Ruler. I want to give a, a little shout out to Guma Yusi. I think that a couple more years, a couple more events. He's getting there. He stays with T1, and T1 keeps winning at the international events, then you better believe that we're going to be talking about him on this type of uh, comparison. But right now, yes, the only guy that can stack up at the ADC position to Def is Ruler and what they have accomplished throughout their careers. The numbers you'll find relatively similar, but we're here to dive on into them and talk about these two wonderful, extremely talented players of League of Legends. And when you're Looking at the numbers for both these guys, they get eerily similar in a lot of categories. First and foremost, these are the only two players in the history of the game that have won MSI, a world championship, an LPL, and an LCK title. Yes, Faker, you're going to have to go over to the LPL if you want to join uh, those ranks. But these guys are the only two. Really, one of the biggest differences career-wise is just the teams, because Ruler spent almost his entire career on Gen G before going over to JDG, and then obviously Deft has played for six different organizations and been to Worlds eight times with those six different teams. And DRX and KT, he's had two separate stints on those orgs. There's a little bit of a difference in the luxury that has been afforded throughout their careers. You can look at Ruler and, of course, yes, the Gen G team that he was instantly thrown into and, and kind of, again, being that prized prospect piece that was developing alongside this organization, rising that championship status that they would come to enjoy and park in in the LCK and then goes over to the LPL. JDG builds out that super team. He is the superstar of that super team and leading the charge the way that he played that, that past year. And then you look at depth and you realize his career, this mercenary for hire going around the world, the regions, LPL, LCK, doesn't matter. He's going to find his way. And the thing that I look at with that kind of little thing that sometimes is a knock on guys that do this, you know, mercenary for hire, go out there and, and play type of thing. You look at every single one of these stops he becomes an instant fan favorite, not just because of his gameplay, but the way that he treats his fans, he interacts back, one of these type of things that I, I think is an extra little star in the category of death. And, yeah, I mean, case in point, that kind of culminated in the 2022 Miracle Run. But I, I think these are the only guys you can talk about right now in terms of GOAT AD carries all time. And I never thought we'd be talking about guys over Uzi. But look at what these two have done just since Uzi retired in 2020, I think it was. But, uh, I mean, when you're looking all time, things you got to check off. First and foremost, longevity. Well... Def's been at the top of his game for the better part of a decade. There's been some dips for sure throughout there, but over 10 years, and I know people kind of give that edge to him over Ruler, but Ruler's been around since 2016, guys. We're talking about nine years himself that he's been at the top of the game. That's scary how, how that can add up like that when you're talking about a player like Ruler and how young you assume and think they are type of situation. And then you go, wait a minute. That much time has passed? How oh. old am I? Oh, <laughs> We don't want to get into that conversation. But when you look at that and you talk about the longevity of these players and, again, ups and downs and where they've been at the peaks of their career type of thing, you're looking at how much adapt, you know, how can you adapt to the meta, to what is going on? Because, again, of course, with this longevity, 2016, you know, Ruler, going back even further with Def, 
you're talking about in a completely different game, the way yeah. it's evolved and the things that are necessary to survive, to thrive at that top level. And when you look at both of these uh, your players and you're looking through their champion list, I think you can really identify a couple of things here. One, I think Ruler is a little bit more stable in comparison to Def, someone who's maybe a little bit more meta de de you know, dependent in certain situations. But that doesn't mean that he has not been able to adapt, has not been able to find success throughout the time and history of league of legends go back a couple years and you know not too far given where we're at right now but you got you had the awesome dudes in the bottom lane the awesome carries ap champions down there and you go look at def a couple surprises in there swain mordekaiser over 75 percent win rates but then of course a couple of duds in there cassiopeia vladimir zero percent you know no cassiopeia is only one game vladimir's two but still a couple of misses in there. When you look on the other side towards Ruler, you don't really find those type of gaps, not necessarily those type of surprises. Almost everything is above that 50, above a 60% at the very least type of win rate. And then you get to the comfort. That's the other one I want to look at in these champion pools is the Ezreal. Of course, Korean ADCs. How could we not be examining the Ezreal pick, the most popular one? Both of them have played it a ton of times. Their most played champion in their career. I think over 120 games plus for both of them on it. And both of them sitting above 70, 75% win rate or close to on this champion. Really goes to show, again, what they have done and why they've been able to stay at the very top for so long. Yeah, and basically only behind Faker, both these guys, in most LCK accolades in terms of kills and games played. So, again, testament to longevity. A++ for that one. They've won pretty much every type of tournament that's possible. You can throw Ruler a slightly uh, extra bonus because he's won the Asian Games once and was represented twice which again speaks to the consistency out of him four years later still thought to be the best 80 carry in korea uh and then i think where you can maybe this is where my argument or my point sways is when you're talking about peak levels of performance over their careers we've had moments where deft you're saying oh, might be a little bit washed at this point there were times on the hanwha life stint times on the first round of drx you know circa 2020 that you were feeling that way and i think deft is at his best when he's kind of the secondary or uh, uh, the 1b to a squad you talk about zeka's miracle run for drx the kt squad he was on it was really edg only where he was kind of the guy Ruler's kind of the opposite. He's always your number one option. Even on some of these bad Gen G rosters, it was still, you wanted to tune into the games to see what Ruler was going to do. So in terms of peak performance, I got to give the edge to Ruler. It makes me think of, you know, in, in traditional sports, right, where you can have that star player, but, you know, there's sometimes there's a, a guy like Deft who maybe wants to take a little bit more of that backseat, wants to be that second in command type of situation to help lift up not only that superstar, but everybody else with that play that comes along with it. And I think you can look at that with a lot of the times in Deft's career, we're talking again, yes, how fantastic he is. But usually it's because we're talking about somebody else, something else going on in that team, making the calls, making a bigger play, something else in that type of realm where then Deft is able to then hop into that little pocket, that little void underneath that ultra spot and really take over to a level that is not the way that other players do in that type of situation. And on the flip side, Ruler, he is that ultra superstar. He is that guy that says, you know, uh, last second of the game, dying moments, I want the rock. Give me the ball. I'm going to take the shot. He wants it all the time. You can even look at the transition from Gen G to JDG and how active, you know, he is in the shot calling role as an ADC. And then again, a lot of these plays that he is making where you can clearly see he's got that type of energy to him. He takes it to the enemy team. Deft, a guy who maybe, you know, plays alongside the support. You know, again, we've seen 
some of this, uh, you know, the recent success alongside a player like Barrel, who we know is incredibly active in what he's doing, not only to his bot lane partner, but the rest of the team. I think that is certainly a factor you can look at with both of these players. And that's not uh, necessarily a knock on either one type of situation, but it definitely is a, a place where we see the differential between how both of them have carved out their careers. It's contrasting play styles is essentially what it is, right? I mean, Ruler comes into an already stacked JDG lineup with players like Knight who have won multiple MVPs. He gets a pet to kill in his very first game and it was right away like, I'm still the guy. Knight, you're great, but I'm Mr. President. Protect the VIP, whereas Deft is maybe more... What does the team need? He seems like the, uh, being more of a team player. That's not a knock. I'm not saying Ruler's a selfish player. But again, it's the play style. And you could argue either way. You either want that MVP level, protect me, VIP, Uzi play style. Or Deft comes in and says, what do we need for this game? What does the team need to be improved? They've, as you said, they've both carved very different paths. And both have been uh, incredibly successful. I think it's a situation where you go, Ruler is the type of dude that just says, regardless of the situation, no matter the external factors, I am performing. I am the difference maker. I am that tip of the spear for the team. And I'm going to be that guy. And when you look at Def, it's more of a situation, more of an environment dependent type of thing. What is the meta? What are the teammates that he's with and they're playing? And how do things work out? And then how does Def approach it and say, all right, this is the Tetris shape that I need to be to finish out the puzzle here for the squad. Different approaches, but absolutely one of those ones where then it kind of plays into you look at the results for both of these guys. And you can see that depth again, very hot, very cold, very hot, very cold type of situation. Whereas ruler, it is that steady heat. There is a constant temperature around him because he is constantly generating what is going right for the team. And for the sake of, you know, having to make a decision on a video uh, of something like this, because it's the AD carry role, if it was maybe any other role, I, I might side with the play style of Deft. But because AD carry is about consistency, it's the most selfish role, let's be honest. You're running around getting spoon-fed as much farm as you can to reach three items as quickly as possible. Who am I most confident in in a team fight late game when they have their items? It's got to be ruled. It's one of these ones where if you're building a team, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, but the way that I would then approach the rest of the roster would be one of those things where I go, okay, I want a guy like Deft because I know that I want to be putting this type of guy here, this type of guy here, and this is the synergy I'm imagining, whatever type of thing of the whole situation. But if you're just going, I need a power player. I need to win this kickball game on the playground type of thing. I want Ruler. He is absolutely one of these guys. And not that Deft is in any of these type of situations, but more so Ruler is hungry for the moment, the big time play, the one that seals it all type of thing. You can go back to the very, you know, go back to his first world championship that he is securing for the Samsung Galaxy and the big play, of course, to catch out Faker and seal it all where we know history comes back to bite him and he gets caught in a similar type of play from faker but that's years down the line type of thing the guy who is ready to make that type of play pull that trigger that is ruler and i think that is a, a super star level above where we have depth in, in the way that he's played his career world's mvp in his second ever gear uh for ruler and again across all the splits seasons years just feel like the down years for ruler were never even close or well his floor is basically most other guys ceiling so yeah the, we're given at least i'm giving the slight edge to ruler but again these are the only two guys you can have in this conversation until we either see continued dominance from guma on t1 or maybe he goes onto a different squad and proves he can win not under the t1 band We've seen, we uh, talking about both Ruler and Deft, we've seen both angles, more or less. We've seen, yeah. again, the longevity in a career with Gen G for Ruler, and of course, then pivoting over to JDG. But then we've also seen the more mercenary style, the hippity hoppity of Deft and throughout his career. I think, yes, it is only a short time till we're adding Gumiyushi to this type of conversation. But what a conversation it is to have a, about these three. The only other thing I might 
slip in for this one is I don't think there was ever really a period in Def's career that we were talking about him head and shoulders in that conversation about the best, the very best player in the world. I think after, you know, the 2022 World Championship and he adds that one to his title, you can have that conversation about the better career between him and even some of the goats like Faker type of thing. But as far as when you're looking at that ultimate power level that was reached, we weren't talking about that with depth, and we certainly were talking about that just a short year ago about Ruler and where he compared to the very, very best of the world. It's a two-horse race at the moment with maybe a third coming, but man, what a race it was. And whether or not Deft plays again after he does his mandatory military service, either way, Hall of Fame, Hall of Legend level career out of him, absolutely hands down, no question. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.